What up, it's your girl DJ Dill Cartel, 9 to 5 for what? The interviews, and today we will be interviewing someone really, really special that's been in the game for 16 years. Yes, 16 plus years, you know, creating the drip for everyone. Boys, girls, men, women, and also some of your favorite celebrities have been seen wearing her clothing. Who is it? You already know, Bilardo. So we just waiting for her to get up here right now so we can get this thing popping and see what we're doing. Oh, how are you? Yo, I'm so honored to have you here, man. Thank Listen, you. you've been in this game 16 plus years. Yes, I know. Long. 16 years ago. Look, look, you got great things coming up. I've been seeing your Instagram. You you're working with uh Greg and yes. Jamila T. Davis. Yeah, I see her. Awesome. Right, I see her story. What was that? Uh, pink collar song. Uh, pink collar brown. Yeah, so I thought that was dope. Y'all, congratulations on that. But you know we gotta get down to that but Largo. I'm ready. You wanna do it? I'm ready. Come Let's on, go. Think, we gotta sit down for this. All right. So yeah, so um, again, I'm, I'm so happy to be sitting here with you. I mean, just over the years, watching everything that you've been doing is amazing. Like, let's just, let's rewind back into time. Okay. All right, let's go all the way back. First of all, for people that don't know, who is Tiffany Williams? Whew, that's a, that's a, a, a layered answer. Okay. Um, I don't know what to say. I'm your... The average Philly girl, mm -hmm. but the owner of uh, co owner, co creator, let's say, okay, of the Largo, um, the brand. Mm -hmm. I started this brand myself, and a lot of people know me on Instagram is Celine Vanderpump. My partner is Celine, mm -hmm. my original uh, partner. We started back in 03 with the brand, okay. Um, I always tell people the ironic thing is this happened by accident, mm -hmm. like, this wasn't planned. I met Celine at the backstage of a Lil' Kim concert. <laughs> at the time, I was trying to open a shoe boutique. I wasn't even trying, I love fashion, all aspects of fashion, but I wasn't trying to do clothing. Mm -hmm. And we exchanged numbers. Me and my best friend um, had went to the Lil' Kim concert. She selected a couple people to go backstage. We were two of the people. Celine is like an ultimate Lil' Kim fan uh -huh. backstage. I love his energy, and I thought he would be like a dope person to run this shoe boutique in my head that I thought I was starting. And we exchanged numbers and he called me the next day and that turned in our first conversation was like six hours wow. straight just about fashion at the end of that conversation somehow we went from a shoe boutique to starting a cool line mm. him or i had never went to fashion school either one of us so when we first started Belargo, it was a women's ready to wear line mm -hmm. we were making like coats gowns swimsuits that's how he later went on to cherry pie and I would say probably in about 04, 05, we had the opportunity to do a fashion show. Um, Gil, Gilly the Kid is a good friend of mine. The promoters of the show wanted Gil in the show, and I'm like, well, what we gonna do? We don't make girl clothes. We yeah. make guy, I mean, we, we don't make guy clothes, we make, make girl it. clothes. Uh -huh. Quickest thing we can think of for Gil was a t shirt. Mm -hmm. Celine is, um, he was watching something that he was watching on TV and he came up with the phrase Belargo Boy. Mm -hmm. The graphic designer at the time he gave her that phrase and thus the box was born. Gilly was the first person yes, to rock the Belargo Boy shirt and the rest is, I mean, if you know the history, the rest is history from there. Yeah, so that like that name is just so distinct, like I, like Belargo, like what, what is the origin of that name? How did he come about it? So when we, Celine again, I'm mm -hmm. a credit him for that, I give everybody their yeah. credit. Uh, <laughs> when, we were looking for a name of a brand. Mm -hmm. I knew I'm, I'm very particular, like branding, the art of branding has always been in the back of my mind. Okay. So I knew I wanted a brand number. I knew I wanted a name number one. Like if today I don't want to do clothing anymore, I needed a name that could transcend behind clothing. Mm -hmm. I wanted a name too that you couldn't really tell who was behind it, whether it was male, female, what race was behind it. And, um, I just wanted a name that could kind of, that wouldn't put me and pin me in a box. Mm -hmm. So he came up with a list of like 30 names, Belargo and PRJ is on the list. Mm -hmm. When he gave me the list, I liked how those two sound together. At the time, I was a manager of a, a tennis club. One of my members is French. I asked her, how do we spell it phonet uh, French phonetically? So it appeared to be French because yeah. I wanted that extra 
twang. Exactly <laughs> on it. She told us how to spell it, and I mean, he literally made up the name Belargo. If you look it up, it's, it's, it's no meaning to it, but our meaning for it is fashion is life. Now, it seems like you're more, you know, I don't want to discredit his name or anything, but it seems like you're more like the face of Belargo. When you think about it, everyone just sees Tiffany. I mean, how does... How do you think he feels about that, or is it was it meant to be that way? No, I would honestly say it, it depends on what circles that you ask him because mm -hmm. it's some people. I feel like when where our partnership always worked the the most, like more recent people are definitely going to feel like I'm the face because Celine yeah. has taken a step back out of the clothing aspect of Belargo for quite some years now. But when we first started, we balanced each other out because. I, although I again am into fashion, I'm creative. He's a hundred percent creative. Yeah. I'm like twenty percent creative, but I'm eighty percent business. Mm -hmm. So we always balance each other out. And he was the person that if we was around the parties, like I could be standing next to Diddy, I'm not gonna say, "Hey, I got this clothes on." Yeah. Celine is the person though that's gonna meet everybody in the room. He might pull the shirt out his out the back out his back pocket. He gonna tell everybody about the brand. He was always the more vocal one than I was. I was about to say that. Still, like he's more like the the voice, and you you're more the or you feel like you're more the brains. Um, I'm more the business. I'm not gonna say the, the brains because we bo we both had uh -huh. an excellent excellent ideas, but yeah. definitely most people that's creative are like it's hard for them to channel their focus. So have you ever clashed? Of course. I mean, number one, we have met each other, so it's not like two friends starting a business. Okay. So. Not only did we have to learn each other business wise, mm -hmm. we became we built a friendship yeah. as we started. We started a business as complete strangers. Mm -hmm. We didn't know each other from a can of band. Now in the beginning, was it was it uh, I know you say you just created like, you know, t shirts for the mail line and, and just doing that. So when it came to just picking out the certain pieces that you want, how did that come about? Like, okay, we, we got our shirts, all right, we got our um, sweatsuits. Like how was that conversation or how was that developed? Both of us, um, initially before we ever mm -hmm. even brought designers in, it was him and I that sat down and came mm -hmm. up with like what was the creative vision of the brand and the direction. Yeah. Then we had a graphic designer that we would kind of relay. Colors have always been my thing, like, mm -hmm. all right, well, I'm I'm big into streetwear. I'm mm -hmm. up on sneakers, so I do with sneakers was So you were the brains of the business. I wouldn't say I'm the brains. I would say we both were equally uh -huh. in that area uh but and I would say I'm more business uh -huh. and he's definitely more creative. Yeah, so I mean I know he must have he put us on work because um let's just matter of fact, let's go back to the year Belargo started. Okay. The year. What year was that? 2003. Now, 2000, 2003? Yeah, 2003. I just graduated middle school, going into high school. Are you serious? Yes. I, <laughs> you I, made me feel old. <laughs> I graduated high school in 2007. Woo! Yeah. Oh. I remember, like, Liz, I remember this, like, yesterday. So, yeah. So, back in 2003, mm -hmm. now, marketing was different back then. Wasn't no social media. Right. No social media. No, um, I think we had like MySpace at the time. MySpace was just starting. Uh -huh. Um, the biggest thing here was like, oh, my old heads are no Nightlife Link. Yeah. So. Oh, was those pictures, right? Yeah. yeah uh -huh. And I don't even think that was 03. Nightlife Link might have been 05. Okay. But, so, so yeah, at that time, um, let's just talk about the, okay, you had some other brands out. What was that like? Mesquine, all that stuff going on. Mesquine, um, shout out to Mesquine. Mm -hmm. Like that, if anybody, I always give uh, credit to them. They have been mentors for me in the uh -huh. game um, throughout the course of a largo. But yeah. Mesquine was the first original independent brand out of Philadelphia. Okay. Um, and they actually go global as mm -hmm. a global independent brand. Yeah. So like when I started, Mesquine was the only brand that initially I knew of. Probably in 05, once we made the transition from women's to men's clothing, yeah. you had, um, I've been Taki. Taki now actually does, he's an artist, he does paint, well he's probably the artist, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he had a clothing line. Um, he used to, I forgot what the name of the store on South Street, but he used to be like, his stuff would be, it was in the store on South Street, I don't know if he was a co-owner of the store. You had Thai Nation, which they just came back out, shout out to Don Scott. Um, really, that was honestly, I don't know if Freak Ugly might have been out back then. Yeah. Not particularly sure, but that was like the brands that were out. So mm -hmm. I'm naming y'all. I'm literally giving y'all <laughs> under five brands. That's yeah. That's all it was here. Yeah, but I'm, I'm telling you, like, Belargo, like, you couldn't go nowhere without seeing somebody with that shoulder. I'll never forget looking through all the Nightlife Link pictures, like you said, and all the pictures when people see that Natrix, 3 
all the guys had four X Belargo boy shirts with the with the, with the, with the, the they, I thought it was so the unique. The box the box and, the box and it was a glitter. It was like a yeah. glitter. Oh my god! Like or like the, what's that metallic? metallic. Kind of, yes, I love that shit. So, um, so let's go there with it. Like, how did it feel to just be on that? Like, you man, y- y'all brain was on that pedal stool. Like y'all between it's the skin. It's crazy because mm-hmm. I don't think like now that I look back, I realize mm-hmm. what happened. But when you in the moment of it, uh-huh. you don't realize what's going on. Yeah. And when we, again, we made the, the, the shirt was like by accident. We did some shit real fit quick for mm-hmm. Gilly to do a fashion show. Mm-hmm. This was never thought out that I was like, okay, we're going to have a brand. Like we didn't really have, I had like a business plan financially. Yeah. But we didn't have a plan like, all right, year one, I want to do this year too. We never had a publicist. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just now, current year, getting my first PR for the brand. So we, we it just like things just was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, Salim and I are both have always been popular throughout the city in our own right. So initially, how I was getting stuff on people was I know all of, yeah. I knew all of. Back then, they weren't called influencers. Mm-hmm. What what people would what would become influencers now? But I knew all the influencers. Yeah, because I was gonna ask you that. Like, how did you get those celebrities like in your stuff? Like, Not even celebrities. Yeah. I'm talking about just when was- when how the brand the brand took off without any celebrity uh-huh. presence. The brand honestly really just took off by Philly. Yeah. Core Philly people promoting um and embracing the brand. Mm-hmm. So initially when I was coming when I came out, like all the guys that I knew they would be out in the mix. Mm-hmm. Yo, do me this favor. I got this I got this line I need to put a shirt on. Mm-hmm. First it was resistance, like, damn so far, I do it, I do it. But then I give me a good maybe four or five months in and the same people that I was had the Finesse a little yeah. bit to get them in the shirt was hitting me up like, yo, where you at? I need to buy five. Like they wanted to buy the mm-hmm. shirts. I spent a lot of time giving out just free shit to get people in the brand and to get the brand noticeable. Mm-hmm. But then it just turned around, and from there, I never. If anybody would have asked me in two thousand three, would I still be doing Belargo current day? I would have told you no. This I, I never would have envisioned this. Mm-hmm. This just faith, uh, luck. God, I don't know. Yeah, it sounds like y'all, y'all were blessed. Like, it seems like it, like listening to you, not that y'all didn't have a game plan, but it's just like, you know, y'all had that angel in y'all because, you know, you you, you seen Gil, and then that started, and, you know, the, the, the awareness started to grow, and people was requesting it more and stuff. So just with the high demand of it, how did y'all keep up with that? Because I, I know y'all had a store down, you know, South Street. Like, it was it was getting real. Before even a store, though, so probably in, I, we opened our first store in 2012. Mm-hmm. So literally, you can, that was seven years yeah. I spent out the truck. I was about to say, how did, you, how did you do that? Like, like Every day after work, I'm every part of the city. Mm-hmm. And then it became a point where, you know, um, once, like, I forgot where I was working even at the time, a healthcare place. Um, I got put on probation because I'm coming into work late. My phone was ringing at the desk. I sit right across from my boss office, especially summertime as people, like people don't want to wait for shirts. Yeah. And then it came to a point that I'm making so much money, I'm I'm waking up miserable every day. Like, what the hell am I coming here for? I could make the money they paid me in a week, I can make this in a couple hours if I just stayed home. Yeah, yeah. So um I remember being called into the office and they basically told me I was put on probation. If I mm-hmm. called out was late anytime I would be fired. And this was at the was on a Friday at the healthcare tennis place. club, right? No, oh, was it I then had left the tennis uh-huh. club. Um now I'm at a healthcare place. They gave me an ultimatum on a Friday. My mom is always like my go-to person, so I called her and I was like, I'm going to quit my job. She like, you out of your mind. Why well, would you quit your job? You got benefits. Like, I come from a traditional family. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, she don't know the... It's nobody in my family. I'm the first entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. My mom it was on her same job from the time she was 17 until retirement. Oh. So... So did she did she understand your vision of what you no, were doing? But she was supportive. My uh-huh. mom and dad, um, rest in peace my dad, but my parents have always been... Mm-hmm. Even if they necessarily think it was a good idea, they would ride with me. But yeah. no, at first she did not. Nobody saw the vision. Honestly, when I wanted to quit and even open the store, Celine didn't see the vision of the store. His thought process was, why would we get a store? What do we need over here for? We're making so much money. But I knew what the brand was becoming bigger than I could maintain out of the trunk. Mm-hmm. I was missing customers. Then we get into the, the reality of, it has always been this way with me and Celine. You got people that favor him and you got people that want to deal with me so we had people that wanted to per- support the brand but they didn't want to go through me mm-hmm. i felt like the store would alleviate all of those mm-hmm. things so um i quit on that monday 
I started looking for space literally that Monday afternoon. I found a perfect spot in Northern Liberties, probably like a week out. And um, at the time, we did have a third investor, rest in peace to Rasul from South Philly. So uh, Sewell was in, he was an investor. Sewell was down for us to do the, do the store, but he was also doing real estate. So kind of he went his way and went back doing the real estate thing. And I had found this store and now I'm in limbo of like where I'm gonna come up with the money. So I went home. Anybody who knows me knows that my mom has always, again, financially been super supportive. Yeah. And I needed her not only to help me, to give me down money for the for our first store, but I needed her to sign for it. Mm -hmm. Because by this time, you got five years of my credit from just doing stuff with Falargo is shot. Mm -hmm. She agreed. Um, still the MDC division. We opened September 27th, 2012. Our first day of our grand opening, we had a line consistently around the corner. We did, I remember this day particularly, we did 8,700 in sales. And that was my moment to just be like, I knew it would work. Yeah. Because my, my mom ain't think it would work. Celine wasn't, he was on the fence. Wait, so it was Celine, did he, did he get a piece of the, to the, to he, the chain? Yeah, Celine came, um, Celine had stepped away, like, kind of for about a couple months while I was getting the store together. So he left you, and did he just... came. Then he came back to the table though. Uh -huh. um, so wait a minute. You know, uh, Mrs. Lee, he can't be coming back up to you like, look, man, I know we made 87. Can I get a piece of that? Because you won't walk away after I'd have told you this was going to work. No, he um, <laughs> he actually came back on board though before the store opened. Okay. Probably like a month we was able to mm -hmm. kind of talk some things out he, and he saw the vision. Uh -huh. And that was our first store. So the first store. It was just me and Celine, honestly, mm -hmm. for like the first couple of months in there, day and night, just me and him working the store. And I think the first, the first store is really what forced me to turn up a large one to a business. The first store? The first store. You had? We, uh, this will be my fifth location I'm opening. Ooh, okay. So prior to that, I feel like Malargo was more of a hobby for uh -huh. us. Um, we were making tons of money, but we couldn't drink it because the average day for me would go, I would get off work, I might sell shirts. Especially if it's summertime, my girlfriends hit me. Yeah. Now I'm at happy hour. The money from the shirts is mixed in with my regular money. Mm. I don't need the money. I'm not really keeping track of inventory. Okay, I'm just yeah. off the whim. Fast money. Fast money. Yeah, okay. Uh, but the store, now you're talking, you have to have business bank accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to start accounting for what's coming in. Mm. Our first time having an accountant in the seven years that we had been in business was when we opened the store. Yeah. So when we opened the store, it was really where business wise like i felt like Malargo truly became a business mm -hmm. and i don't talk i hate talking numbers because i don't ever want to come off braggage but yeah. i want people my biggest thing and take back would be as i if i knew back then like about money and how to better manage money i would have yeah. been in a way better place so if i if anything that i could give back to entrepreneurs yeah. i just want them to understand like how to better manage your finances when we ended we, we opened september 27th you know, you close your fiscal year December. Mm -hmm. We closed out that year at eighty seven thousand in sales. Mm -hmm. But what that was indicated to me is I've been making a hundred grand or more for the past seven years and I did not have any money to show for. Where was my cash going? Because we wasn't managing it right. So, so yeah, because uh, I really want to get into that. Do you think a lot of like businesses don't survive because they don't know how to uh, Really, just watch their finances it or finances or put it into places where it needs to be. Definitely, uh -huh. I feel like now, especially in social media era, mm -hmm. a lot of businesses don't survive because they don't understand business. Mm -hmm. Social media, I feel like, gives sometimes a false narrative mm -hmm. of what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. People show you nobody is showing you the days that they don't know if we can pay if we can make rent on yeah. the store if we gonna make payroll. We didn't sell that. That's not what the stuff they show you on social media. All they show you is the highlight reels of the success, mm -hmm. but it's other stuff that goes on in the background. Now, was it every day is not sunny in business? No, hell for nobody. Hell, hell no. And another thing, people got to like, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Right. And you know, with this whole social media area era, everybody wants that microwave effect where they do. you get hot for a little bit for thirty seconds and then you cool again. So it, you know that business don't work like that. So. With just marketing, like, did y'all spend any money on just, on marketing? And no, out because there? even then, mm -hmm. again, we learn in a business. Mm -hmm. We're learning business together. We're learning each other. We're learning this. So even with the store, 
Now you fast forward, we in 2012, we are in social media era. Yeah. I was able to pump the brand and get the brand hot while on social yeah. media. So now I have to learn how to navigate in this new world and understand, okay, your visuals gotta be on point. You gotta be posting. Yeah. You need marketing. Like yeah. this is stuff that we didn't have to think of before. Mm -hmm. Before all I had to do is pop up, roll up on somebody's corner and pop the trunk and I'm selling sixty to hundred t shirts. Yeah. So what's the difference between like now and then? Because I feel like now with social media, you don't have to spend that much money on marketing. You know, because you could post up wherever you at or new items that you have and you know now I call it propaganda. I mean that's what it's called, but it's it's that celebrity propaganda where you uh, one celebrity might have it on now, everybody wants to wear it. Whereas though back in the day it was a little bit different. It was more word of mouth or radio, which was, you know, doing real good at the time. So, you know, how 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 does the whole marketing thing just I mean I think work? social media definitely has made marketing mm -hmm. easier. But current day social media is about to turn back to how it was before. For real? Because I, I feel like it. Um, initially when social media started, yes, you could market for free. Yeah. Now if you notice on Instagram, they, they kicked in with their algorithm stuff. They are forcing you businesses to pay for ads because mm -hmm. they know people are jumping on social media and becoming millionaire billionaires off of a free platform. Mm -hmm. So now they're making your stuff appear less and if mm -hmm. you wanted to appear more, then you got to give us some advertising mm -hmm. dollars. The celebrity thing, same thing. Consumers are not dumb. Mm -hmm. All of these flat tummy tees, fashion overs, yeah. uh, at, at your brand is not uh, is not as authentic as it was. Yeah, when it people was first be like started. surgery. Okay, did y'all add the surgery in there? Like you ever see yeah. the comments? <laughs> I mean, they like. I feel like with understanding for me, the hard part was the transition mm -hmm. of being from an era before social media. Yeah. So for me, when social media came. We were kind of lost in, the, in initially because number one, I just felt like to be a hundred percent blunt. It was a lot of like a lot of fake shit. I mm -hmm. felt like social media was like the army. You get on this drink, you be all you could be. Like people was <laughs> making false yeah. narratives to the public, and mm -hmm. it's like, dog, we know like I some people that I know like this yeah. is not this is not that. And people was just buying into stuff. Mm -hmm. So initially, I was resistant to social media mm -hmm. because I felt like. How hope say I was who I was before I got here. Mm -hmm. So I was a it, it was a struggle for me to adapt. But for business purposes, you have to adapt. This is the this is that's like somebody go to jail and you do twenty years and you and now we got cell phones. You might have been used to a beeper. You gotta adapt with the time. Mm -hmm. So once I was able to better understand how to navigate social media marketing, I felt like it became definitely more easier, you know, for the brand. Um, but I'm still not a, like the the whole influencers things. I'm personally just not a big fan of it because I feel like your customers are not your customers is not dumb. They they can tell what's authentic, who whether you got paid um placements, whether you got placements because it's a favor from a favor. Like mm -hmm. and honestly, Philly we such a I want to say it's a Philly a city that honestly like it's funny. Barrel is also. Um, Popularity thing. This person wearing it, we gonna jump on it like it's a not even that, But Philly is a city that's not super impressed by celebrities. Cause yeah. you got it's people in Philly that feel like shit. I I love big, but it's, it's I can guarantee you somebody that feel like bitch. I'm as important as Beyonce. Yeah. I used to, the ironic thing is I'm a good Nelly is has always been a good friend of ours over the years, and I remember he came here a long time ago and he like yo I hate we hate coming to Philly because. Cause the dudes here be so hard, and I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, cause it's probably fifteen niggas sitting in this club. Like, man, fuck no, y'all got as much money as him, mm -hmm. and they don't. But this is our mentality. Is, yeah. So here, I never was like the celebrity presence that we did have, and God bless that we had them. But that was stuff that I didn't seek out. Mm -hmm. It became to a point, especially once we got the stores, that people just knew of Belarga being a Philadelphia brand, yeah. and celebrities would just pull up. Mm -hmm. And out of love, they put the stuff on. Mm -hmm. But it never was like, all right, I want to get my stuff on so and so. Let's send this shirt. How we get the shirt? To, yeah. Oh, I didn't. Like that's product. I look at it, it was guys here that I just that I found as effective as getting my stuff on a celebrity. Mm -hmm. So I just got love genuinely. So do you, do you do you feel like it takes a team to yes to 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 push like your brand or anything? Because you know it's it's, it's all. Somebody gotta be the face, you know, just like, you know what I'm saying, with your partner, somebody gotta be the face. And also, a lot of people is me, 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 this is mine, this is my thing, and not really at your team. Like like you said, you got PR, you got partner. It uh, took me a long time to get into that place, yeah. though. 
mm-hmm. because before I was, that was very so much me. Um, not of it, too. Not of it that is just all mine. Mm-hmm. It just was like I had so much of my own personal money invested. Mm-hmm. That I felt like if, if any mistakes was gonna happen to the brand, yeah. if I make the mistakes, I can't get mad. If I if I fuck up my own money, then that's on me. Yeah. But I'm gonna feel a different type of way if somebody else fuck up somebody else. Do you uh so do you have you had investors? Yes, I've had investors um over the year and yeah. not like some investors honestly came through uh people that seen the brand going good and they wanted to have a chance to, mm. to flip some money or make some money. Some investors came through that we saw it. Like it was times where uh, money was mismanaged, things mm. was, was like tight, and we needed somebody to come in. Thus, how Greg is right now. Greg mm. is actually in as a partner, but mm. a lot of people feel like a lot of people that don't know me and him, like mm-hmm. he's been around since 2003 when Blurman mm-hmm. first started. Mm-hmm. Our very first photo shoot was right on 29th in Oxford, mm-hmm. um, Jefferson, rather, at the playground. Um, he's been involved on the back end of the brand on and off throughout the course. Since we even had the brand, do you think a lot of like entrepreneurs, the future entrepreneurs, don't understand investment? Like somebody you have can to really have an investor. I, I feel like you, you have you, this you movement think you have of, at some point because the brand yeah. is going to still grow beyond what mm-hmm. you, what the means of what you can do with it. And I feel like we have this movement, especially mm-hmm. women. Everybody wants to be like, I built this from the muscle. I had five hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and yes, that is a part of my story. Mm-hmm. I, when we first started, me and Celine both did take five hundred dollars a piece. <laughs> Uh-huh. But it became a point to the brand, the bigger your brand goes, mm-hmm. the more it costs for you too. Yeah. So the more money you make, the more oh, money it takes to maintain yeah. mm-hmm. the business. And for us, an investor where, like I feel like the right investor, Greg was the perfect fit. Mm-hmm. Because he just, his approach to finances mm-hmm. is unlike anybody I know. Like he just understands how to not only maintain money but to grow money mm-hmm. and that was the biggest part but Largo's problem was never that we were not making money uh-huh. but we young I'm 20 when we over 2012 Lord how, how am I <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm 20 something in 2012 yeah. uh-huh. and I, I never like I, I've never been in the I, I come from a, a great background yeah. so I've always had access to money that's why I think so with, with having more access I was a little more frivolous mm-hmm. because I was never one like that really uh, appreciated money. Let me say it that way. So I didn't know how to manage the money. So as fast as the money was coming in, the money was going back out. Mm-hmm. Me and me and Celine, you, you we thought we done. Yeah. We acting like uh, what's the name? What was uh, Mike Epps on? Um, all about, all the, about business. the business. Like we thought we had made it, so we had spending the money left and right. Yeah. And we didn't know how to take, uh-huh. maintain the money. Did you go out like out the city to kind of also like expand with the brand too? Like I don't um, know how to feel it because I know um, who was I talking to? I was talking to Jen. She was saying that you know some like you were artists, food rappers, they get their like, buzz or a brand going in the city and that's it, and they think they made it. But no, you know it's a bigger, it's a bigger, it's a bigger out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, mean I hear you talk about New York a lot. Yeah, I, well, I'm in New York a lot. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of, I get a lot of love from New York. Mm-hmm. Shout out to New York, that's right. in particular. Oh, but wait! Before I go to that, because I, I I really wanted to ask you this about the investor. Okay. I think that a lot of people don't talk about the the ROI, the, the return on investment. Nobody right. really talks about that part, and that's like the biggest part of having investment. Because people say, "Oh yeah, I want ten thousand dollars for my business." But no, you have to be able to. Tell, you have to be able to tell, tell these people how they getting their money back. Mm-hmm. What are they? And not the ten thousand back. What are they getting back on top of the ten thousand? Right. And you have to be able to legitimately show that that you have a viable business that can mm-hmm. bring that back to them. Mm-hmm. Um, there has been like, again, we've had different investors throughout the years, like uh, not corporate corporate investors. Mm-hmm different like people that I have known um but we did when we were on South Street how we ended up on South Street Dr. Mm-hmm. Denham wanted to buy into the company mm-hmm. I was not trying to get down South Street mm-hmm. um they had been calling honestly they had been calling our 800 number trying to get in touch with me mm-hmm. they were seeing the shirt so much coming in out the mm-hmm. store they were inquiring about who owned the brand so y'all had your shirts in Dr. No like customers, customers were coming come- in. Mm-hmm. at the time we did have our shirts in the vision which is across from Dr. Denham um, across from the neck. So he was asking us, you know, what did we think about moving to the second floor mm-hmm. in the space? Um, honestly, at that point in time, Northern Liberties were changing. 
if anybody's familiar with the area, Darlin's Diner was leaving, mm-hmm. Soul Patrol was leaving, PYT was leaving. So, oh, so y'all were in the Northern Li- Liberties? Yes, that's what Ooh. that's what was where my first two store locations mm-hmm. was. Mm-hmm. So oh, y'all was right. getting to a bad, bad. <laughs> no, seriously, because I, I, I'm only looking at South Street. Oh yeah, no, before South Street, uh, before South Street was in Northern Liberties. Okay, that was my first two locations was, mm-hmm. and um, I kind of wanted to leave, mm-hmm. so. I was like, I'll entertain it. I was literally going in because most people that's in Philly or that's in the clothing industry has always been this legendary, cautionary tale of Dr. Denim stealing Mesquite, stealing their business mm-hmm, from them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I was on the fence. Like, do I really want to do this? So somebody put you down for the information. I mean, it's, it's been a, if you in like the clothing, it's, yeah. it's been a, a, a tell all along so wait they wanted you to leave your store to go upstairs yes but not only just for that they wanted to partner with us they wanted to buy into the company mm. their original plan was to turn the net dr denim usa boutique and three of their other locations outside of philadelphia mm. into belargo boutiques this mm. is how they approached us initially oh, so they were going to start with the, all of their branding and just make it it was a reason behind why okay. they needed to but uh-huh. i didn't know the reason initially okay. when it, this yeah. is just how we were approached so, you know, I'm like, okay, well, and it's, well, I'm willing to hear it out. So, until we could work out the specifics of the business, it, the next thing was like, well, you can just move upstairs. You don't have to worry about rent. So, we took the move because, honestly, I wanted to oh, move. you did the move. We did the move. Mm-hmm. That's how I ends up on the second floor of the net. Mm-hmm. Now, thus, Gray comes in initially as a partner partner for the okay. first time. Because with dealing with them, I felt like I needed somebody strong on my team that understood finances. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm leery about how they do business, so I wanted Mm -hmm. to make sure I wasn't going to get jerked around. Um, And that's somebody I completely, like, trust. So he came back in, um, too. Now we are in, I'm not going to square footage, but that upstairs of the net, it was probably, like, triple the size of my store. Mm -hmm. So now I have to get inventory, triple the size of the inventory Mm -hmm. we've been doing. I need some money in flux. Thus, that's where Gray came in to help us. Um, a lot of the deal with investors, and I say to entrepreneurs, all investments is not good investments. Don't let nobody hold a bag over your face and don't be so glamorized by a dollar sign that you do make wrong moves for your business. But what do you mean by like a, a, all money is not good money? Well, all investments. I didn't feel like that, that situation was a good situation for us. So honestly, I was the person that held the deal up. Um, Celine was down to do the deal. Greg was financially, he was willing to go whichever way. So it was more than just saying, okay, 50, let's just say for example, Okay, I'm gonna give you this fifty thousand. Just give me my money plus some. No, they wanted to come in as partners. They wanted to come in as on equity of the business. So it's more than just dollars when it comes to. It depends on what your investment deal is. Okay. Different kind of deals. You might get an investor. They just want to put some money in, and they just want money back. And that's what I'm saying. Might get investors. Mm -hmm. They want to come in actually on the company. Now Mm -hmm. they want to own a percentage of the company, Mm -hmm. which that was the case with with Dr. Dr. Denham. Okay. Um, and then uh, you might get an investor. Well, the first one will be like similar to a loan Mm -hmm. for the depends on how you're doing the investment um for them particularly they wanted to come in on a business mm-hmm. what i'm not going to get into the specifics but what they wanted to offer is number one i didn't feel like i didn't feel like it was nowhere near worth what they wanted like mm-hmm. the equity amount that they wanted for our business mm-hmm. the dollar amount that they was offering us was absurd to me um it was little money up front but they were promising us, us like mass like to have a big distribution and then two bigger than the to money. Put y'all to make, somewhere, uh, uh, other places. To be able, not even to be able to put us other places, just to have a big distribution channel mm-hmm. behind us. So mm-hmm. now we can manufacture. Now you can do more like a mass business. Okay. But for me, it wasn't really the money part that turned. The money was a big part. Mm-hmm. Let me not say that. Let's not get the <laughs> But it wasn't the money. I am very in love with my brand. Mm-hmm. I have a vision for what I want for Belargo. And I don't care if it takes me 30 years to reach this vision. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I, I'm more protective over how the brain appears and where the brain goes. So in our first conversation, like people that do business looks and people that is not like really in the fashion, but like fashion is just a business for them. They look at it as just dollars and cents. Mm-hmm. So their idea for the brain was, okay, we're going to turn all these locations into the Belargo store. We're going to pump this brand up. And then we're going to sell the brand 
when I started, when I started up a Largo again, even though I didn't see it becoming this, once it became this, I had no desire to ever sell my, yeah. I guess never want to be a time when Tiffany is not on the Largo and I sell the brand. Someone yeah. told me, uh, and I was like, I thought that was so interesting. They said businesses are made to be sold. And people believe that. And yeah. I get, this is, this is the tricky part where a lot of people that is watching this that's in the business and like a lot of my friends that's really in the business be like, you never can be personally attached to a business. But I'm like, yo, but that's your baby. This though. is like my, like yeah. a real life uh-huh. baby of mine. So I am personally attached. And I remember in our meeting, like when they said that, they were like, because you know, urban brands have a shelf life. And I'm like, no, they don't. Ralph Lauren, it'll never be a, a urban brand that's Ralph Lauren. Says who? Yeah. I'm going to give, I'm going to die trying to be the next Ralph Lauren then. I'm not going to let y'all tell me that, that Belargo has a shelf life. Did I don't they tell you that? Does. That's what they, they say urban brands in general. They don't feel like it's going to be an urban, a, a urban Ralph Lauren, like that will happen again. I don't, I, for, for me, I don't see why I can't have a fashion house that, that my kids, kids, kids is working still someday for Belarga. That's the vision that I have for it. I don't have the desire to pump it up and just cheapen and, and dilute the brand for a dollar. Yeah. I don't, the, the money is not the important thing for me with the brand. So that was a big red flag for me. And then honestly too, just their nationality and their background and just how they do business, I felt like it was a lack of respect for women. Yeah. Um, I saw like a lot of things with them coming in, like a lot of things that I were, was doing day to day in my business, they wanted to replace that and almost turn me into a worker. And no, uh, I work too hard and I've put too much of my time and labor into this business. I, no. So I decided like that was an investment and it was a good amount of money on the table. So you turned it down? I turned it down. What were your partners upset? Celine was livid. That's when that's Celine left the business at that point. Ooh. Celine was pissed. Now what happens when when a, when a partner leaves the business? How do you who keeps it or the young? See, a lot of times when, when Celine has left the business, he never left the business on paper. He oh, just yeah. leaves he just the business. Leaves again. Like, <laughs> you when you're old, I'm not dealing with this yeah. because we get we he we get to those points. Mm-hmm. So like halfway into when we on, once they realize that we're not going to do the deal, mm-hmm. they literally come upstairs and tell us that they close in the Dr. Denims. They give us thirty days to vacate. Mm. And they tell us that we have to start paying uh, rent. I think at the time we was paying something like $3,500 a month mm. to be on the second floor. So now I have 30 days. Right across the street is the old pink elephant store that I'm looking at out the window every day. And honestly, in hindsight, I feel like the, the now I feel like that's when I should have took the, a break on the brand. Yeah. But now I got Celine mad at me because we didn't take the deal. Greg has... Um, with him first coming in as a investor and us being friends outside of business, he has a certain way that he wants to do business and I was very, like, I can be a super stubborn person. So I had a very certain way of how I want to do business. Yes. And we started to clash. And for him, it was like, our friendship is worth more than his money. So yeah. what I'm doing is I can get back to my real estate thing. You do you, the money I put in is there. When you get it back, you get back with me. And I'm going off to do my thing. So now it's like me on this sinking ship by myself. Yeah. But my pride and ego is not going to let me step back. My pride is like, all right, everybody want to step away? I got to show them that well, this sure, yeah. So I went head first into the other store. Now we go from Northern Liberties. I'm probably spending like two grand, 2500 a month on rent. South Street at 3500 towards the end. Police Park Street is 5500 rent. I still have payroll. By the time he gets across the street, um, even to fix it up, it was like another 25, 30 grand to get into the store. My mom helped me again, give me some money. I'm in the store. Um, literally, when we on the net, average day, we making probably about 5,500, 6,500 a day. I'm thinking, Hey, it's gonna be sweet. I'm on the second floor. I'm going to the first floor. We about to kill him. That should turn into ten grand a day. First month we move in there in May. I go through hell and high water to get the store open, but I get the store open. Moving there in May, May is good. I don't know what happened with South Street and the dynamics. I swear, by June South Street is a ghost town. Mm-hmm. Like literally, it goes from we got steady clientele to now shit's not moving. 
So now, this is 2016. Okay. Now I'm looking at it like, all right, is is it the brand they just not fucking with or is it business? We answer all the other neighbors and it's not just my brand, it's just South Street in general. Like, shit slow down. In the meantime, what I back up and miss is we also at that time had, um, I'm probably in six Sneaker Villa locations, a few here, some in the Baltimore, D.C. area. The vision pulls us. That was one of my biggest, like, um, and just to understand the dynamics of it. Valarco was one of the first, like a lot of times when, when brands were going into stores in this in that time space, they was doing consignment, meaning you drop your stuff off and we sell it, we give you money. Yeah. Valarco was one of the first stores, yeah. first brands that was doing wholesale. I never was doing consignment mm-hmm. business. Y'all gonna pay me for this stuff up front. And whether y'all sell it or not, it's, it's yours. Now was I, it any struggles? Like just like No, like, because I never sold out to do wholesale. These brands, these stores approached us. No, was it any struggles with, like you know, at that time with other brands that you might have been cool with, like other independent uh, designers or, you know, with, 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 with the fame and notoriety comes jealousy, maybe relationships with friends, feel like it was just too much No, but to be honest, like, I'm, I, I'm still very much old school, so my mm-hmm. friends are still just my friends that I've been having. Yeah. I mean, I know other brand owners. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not. I wouldn't consider that none of us are friends. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I'm associates with with different other brand owners. Mm-hmm. But no, I, I don't feel like on our end. I mean, a lot of of the up and coming brands, especially when we first got into the game, a lot of people. I mean, when they were first coming into the game around that time, like people was, yo, I need to talk to you. I want to pick your brain. And I have always been one of those mm-hmm. people that's open and. That what you want to know, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Um. So that wasn't really a dynamic there. Um. I felt like the brand just was taking. The brand was just going into a different direction. Um. We have the wholesale accounts with Villa. Mm-hmm. At that time, again, we one of the first independent brands. Villa was doing a homegrown program, but they weren't giving me by wholesale accounts. It was Kazami. Um, Vision, we had a wholesale account with them. Now, literally, they are moving close to 600 units a month that they're doing wholesale from us. When we went and Dr. Denim, that's their direct competitor. Mm-hmm. Because I went over the net, they pulled the account from us. So now they're not doing business. So Even with that being, okay, all right, I get you. Because right. it's, it's now we're yeah. across the street. Mm-hmm. Now they feel like it's a direct competition. So, no, we're not going to carry your brand anymore. So now I'm in the store. The dynamics of it change. Um, September. Flash forward to September, Diddy is doing a bad boy pop up. Um, a friend of Diddy's is cool with Cousin E. They was looking for a space. They heard about my story. They approached Cousin E, who approached me and was like, Diddy want to do the bad boy pop up. I'm like, bet, all right, this is this going to be the turnaround for yeah. the business. Uh, we end up turning it into a, a block party, and Diddy does the pop up at the store. I watched them literally set up in a space that they did not pay for. And make literally, I, I'm not gonna get into his amount, but he made five a five figure amount in a couple hours. That was like an eye opener for me because I'm like, I'm doing this game all wrong. Prior to that, Greg had been telling me, I feel like Greg and another friend of mine, shout out to Dawu Bay, had been telling me, I feel like you should just focus on um, online. This overhead, you want to keep having these high behind stores. Five thousand dollars. That's too much overhead. You can sell this shit online for less overhead. Focus on online. And I'm like, no, I want to. I, I was so caught up again in my ego and the look of things. So how would it look if we closed the store? Mm-hmm. How does it look for the brand? Because now, originally, Valargo the only independent store with their own store, yeah. own independent brand with their own store. But now it's of a brand with a store. So now, how the hell I'ma look? I'm, I'm, I'm in my feelings that way. Mm-hmm. But I'm not in my feelings the right way that I should be to understand yeah. what is best for my business. Mm-hmm. Screw what it, how it's gonna look to people and screw what people gonna think. I want I want my business to last. Yeah. So after really seeing that, I was like, I agree. I could just do a damn pop up tour. I could be state from state, get better brand awareness. I wouldn't have any overhead, and I don't even need to pay that much payroll. Mm-hmm. So did he probably did the pop up tour on a Friday or Monday? Cause I'm I'm a and again with me, I'm real like sporadic. If I got an idea or whatever is in my heart to do, I just do it, I don't really think about it. Monday I came and told my employees like we're closing the store on Friday. Mm-hmm. They was looking at me like you serious. I said, Yeah. I said, I wanna give you all the heads up. 
I know I can't expect for people to wait until I get my shit together. So if y'all got more yeah. other places, like I had um, a head designer at that time, uh, Shahid, he, he got his own brand now, Mo, and my um, manager, Jamil. I was like, if y'all can't ride it out with me, I respect it. But if y'all can, this is where I think I, I see myself going. I'm gonna do this pop-up tour for the summer, but I need to walk away from the store. Even prior to that, I missed out the part that I had the wonderful opportunity to do this, um, I don't wanna call it an internship, but I got the shadow Virgil of Love, mm. um, the owner of Off-White. Mm. He had a four month intensive program where he picked 400 streetwear brands yeah, from around the yeah. country and Valerga was one of them. Ooh. And just even with looking in the, with after that experience of learning streetwear from his perspective, yeah, I was like, we doing this shit all wrong. Oh hell yeah, all wrong. After after that, I decided to pull my accounts from the villa because mm -hmm. I didn't feel like that fit the direction of where mm -hmm. I saw the brand going to go. Uh -huh. Jeopardy. That wasn't kind of no disrespect to the villa. They they yeah. a great company, but um, when I when I did this program with him, I remember one of the questions he asked of. Like what kind of publications you want to see your brand in? What kind of stores? And I'm naming publications like Hypebeast, Hot Snobiety. I'm saying I want to be in Dover Street Market and V-Files. And then he was like, what kind of stores you in now? When you compare the two, yeah, yeah. that's not the avenue. So I, I pulled my the stuff from there, decided to close the store. Um, and we were going to start a pop-up tour, but then just something in my spirit was like, I really just need some time to step back and, and refocus on the direction of where I want this brand to go. And 2016, um, September, I took, up until now, I took like a hiatus from the brand. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times now, I know the famous question that everybody probably gonna get to is, or then I get people that was like, you let people take your spot. I didn't let anybody take anything. I need it for, for my personal sanity. And just for where I see the brand, I needed a break. Mm -hmm. Like I, at that point, was feeling burnt out. Me and Celine not talking. Greg then went back his way. The store wasn't what I was, what I thought it was. My mom like now the loan this money to close the store in, in in a couple months, and I just needed a break. Yeah. Um, and prior even up to that, you talking sixteen years as a female. This is I've been devoting all of my time. I needed a break just for personal life. I can't, I'm in a relationship at this point. My relationship is suffering because at this time, my boyfriend, don't, he's, he doesn't live in Philly. He lives somewhere else. So if I go and see him for four or five days, I come back, the, the business, like the store is upside down. Mm -hmm. So now it becomes a point of, all right, do I spend time with him or do I spend time at my store? And it's like, which one do you neglect? That's how I feel about my own business. Like I want to, like building a team for me is hard. One, because it when you're in this business and you might got opportunists, people just want to be there to, I guess either sometimes they just experience or be around maybe a celebrity or so, but they might not work hard like how you work hard yeah. or make sure, make executive decisions or make sure things are done the way you, you want it done. So it's like, it makes things harder. So that why you, you should be able to go with your boyfriend and have fun and everything is cool at home and not when you come home, everything's all in uproar, you feel me? Right. Or they have to call you 5,000 times. But what I found out the problem of that is, mm -hmm. is of being in that mindset, because I was in the same mindset. Mm -hmm. And not being willing to delegate and mm -hmm. teach people what it is that you do. Mm -hmm. That's why my, my store couldn't survive without me. Because mm -hmm. they don't know all the aspects it takes to run my store because right. I'm so busy just me doing everything. No, don't you worry, I'll do it and I'll right. get it done. I'm not delegating and teaching people how to mm -hmm. mimic me. Yeah. So I can step away. Because mm -hmm. the minute I step away, every aspect of this can't get done. Because don't nobody even know what it is. Yeah. They get done. Mm -hmm. So that was a big part of when I took time off and came back this time. Mm -hmm. Before I decided to even, are right, we going to give this brand another try? Is I knew I had to build a team. Mm -hmm. I can't do this all by myself. I'm 38, I want to have kids. I, I don't so plan on being, kids? no, I don't got kids yet. I want to have some kids. I don't want to be in a store all day. Uh -huh. Like, I, this is not really, that's the, like, as involved as I was in the brand, I want to oversee my brand, but I want to have time for myself. You get one life. And life sometimes can be shorter than we expect it to be. So I want to be able to enjoy my business, but enjoy my life as well. You ever feel like you're the OG in the game? Like, any other new brands ever come to you like you know, a lot of the new brands that that, that mm -hmm. were starting out have definitely came to me and, and sought out advice of mm -hmm. you know when they were were starting out i don't like to look at i i 
it's a weird space. I, I hate looking at myself <laughs> as as the OG or the vet, but yeah, I, I can put I can take myself on a bag and put some respect on my name. I, yeah. I am because I created a lane that was not being mm-hmm. uh, again outside of the scheme. Yeah. Um, it, it wasn't really another brand prior to me mm-hmm. that went uh, outside of them that yeah. went as big as Valargo went. Yeah. And then even now, when people say, "All right, well." For those who, who uh, give you that a Belargo fell off, I'm 16 years in the game. Name me one brand in Philly, one, and I'm gonna wait on it. That was that has 16 years of consistency. Mm-hmm. It's still relevant 16 years later. Mm-hmm. You can't name one. It's a lot of brands out there. A lot it's of brands. A lot of before. You it, got Drake, but then you got Hove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So out of all the brands that's like going on that you see now, who's like some of your favorite? Um. It's hard. I don't think I have a favorite. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of brands that that's moving and shaking, and I see when I I hate getting into naming it because I see when I did it or we did your live, I got the oh, yeah. comments. Oh, she ain't named, and it's, it's no shade to anybody. I'm not gonna well, name all of the yeah. brands, yeah. but I feel yeah. like you named a lot of good. Like you, it you is. I, I think I you mean, named all of them. Right? You got Milano, you got Mabel Marie, uh-huh. you got Lavello, Dia Fora. Um, I forgot L L. How do you say her name? El Rivera. El Rivera. Yeah. I see her stuff moving. Mm-hmm. Stocked up, torture, mold, paranoia. It's yeah. a lot of brands yeah. out here. I feel like that's such a game. Y'all asked me when I started, I named y'all about four yeah, brands. Yeah. But that I goes to show you that you, like your name holds that weight, like that people are waiting for you to say who's hot, who's this, who's that. And if you don't say it, it's a problem. Yeah, so obviously, because like if, if I feel like don't care. you're secure enough in your brand that if I don't, I don't need nobody to tell me I'm yeah, hot. But if people ain't care, they wouldn't even be worried about it. If somebody don't <laughs> tell me I'm hot, I know Bilardo is, is hot. It's yeah. what I think about it. It's hot to me. So mm-hmm. I don't really care what the white think. That's, mm-hmm. that's the kind of, you got to have thick skin in any business, yeah. but especially in this fashion business, mm-hmm. and especially in Philly. Because Philly is a, I love this city. This city has definitely stuck by me, but Philly, I love hate city. They love mm-hmm. you today and hate you tomorrow. So you got to have the attitude that you don't even care what people say. Yeah. You got to do what, what's best for you and know who you are without being validated. Mm-hmm. I feel like a big part of the validation, again, comes from the social media area. Yeah. And that's why I don't really, I'm not mm-hmm. concerned with validation because I've been, Belargo was before social media. Mm-hmm. I don't care what nobody say about it. This is how I feel about it. Being a woman in this game, how are you able to stay so strong? Because I know this game could beat you up. <laughs> being a woman in this game was tough. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember sometimes we would go into meetings and people would, would address Salim and be looking at me like I was his glorified assistant. Like, is she about to get us some orders? And I'm looking at them like, little do y'all know before any business decisions get made, y'all boy had to come through me. Bro, shit, so, bro. no. Um, and then you have the battle of you got men that want to do business with you, but men that want to do other kind of business mm-hmm. with you. And you gotta fight for respect as a woman mm-hmm. in in this industry, any industry. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely gave me thick skin. And I would think that I have just come across as like I'm not I'm not put, I'm not tolerating bullshit. Celine will will tell he's he, his joke that he tells anybody when he'll testify like you don't want to go to bed with her. <laughs> like that's one of the toughest people that you want to go to bed with. Her. I'm a Capricorn. Ooh, I don't, you know what? I don't know too much about Capricorn, but they say we're like perfect. I'm a Virgo, okay. so they say we got like a bond. September. September first. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so they, what is that Capricorns are? In, I don't know, y'all. Like we love money. One. Yeah, y'all like we we won't get to a dollar. We straight, this. yeah, we straight forward. And I just to say, speak for me. I don't know if it was a Capricorn thing, but I'm. It's it's been a gift and a curse mm-hmm. for me. When I got my mind set on something, it's yeah, not the same. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's going to happen. And sometimes that has worked out great for me, and sometimes that has worked out bad for me as well. <laughs> so what's coming up for Belargo? What's, what can we expect? What's next? Well, first and foremost, we are opening up a new store. Yeah. 26 and Master. Store um, number? Store number five. Five or oh, hope, right. hope, hope this is, I know they say lucky <laughs> seven, but hope, hopefully this is yeah. lucky five. Um, I'm happy about this location. This is the first location I'm going into where I'm rent free. We own the building. So, um, store rent for free. Rent free. Rent free. Rent free. Rent free. Rent free. Yeah. With the building. Um, All that putting out you had to do, man. You, you, oh, yours. I learned my lesson after the last time I relocated. <laughs> Dude, but, Greg, um, Greg, Greg. Yes. Shout out to Greg Park. Oh, awesome. Greg ain't going to hit the. 
There's no way with yeah. him as my partner, we was ever going uh-huh. to go to a rent situation. Mm-hmm. He does not believe in, in, in being in places that you don't own. So. Did he re, uh, what is that, renovate and everything? Yes. Did he, okay. um, Maybach Construction did all the mm-hmm. renovation. Mm-hmm. Um, he did the floor layout. Only only thing I did is like the layout of the interior of uh-huh. the store. Um, we are a storefront in the front, offices, and a small print shop in the back of the store. Okay. So, still construction is not fully done on the on the building. Um, this rain set us back, and again, I was trying to press, press, press to have this building. I was hard set on a date, but I wanted to be right. Mm-hmm. I took two and a half years off, so I ain't in a rush. I'm blessed to be in a position that I'm not in a rush for my business to open it. Mm-hmm. I can still survive whether the store opens or not. So um, I'm looking to be open for business technically this weekend. Okay. And then a grand opening coming in August. I don't know what that's Are you happy? I'm excited. Yeah. I am. Long time coming. It is. I, I'm happy because I'm back in a great place. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in my hiatus, I had I, I fell into the space where I just was not in love with retail. Mm-hmm. And I honestly never saw myself doing another mm-hmm. store, at mm-hmm. least no time soon. Like I just was turned off with the whole brick and mortar situation. I was more focused on just doing online. Um, Online has always done amazing for us. And I just didn't really want to do brick and mortar. But then, you know, Greg came to me and showed me this property. And it's just like he has the vision that he has for the brand. Mm -hmm. Like finally we are on the same page. Um, and, And even he's just on the level that I wasn't even thinking with the brand, mm-hmm. and that just made me fall, fall in love with retail again. So I'm happy to be back. My, I got my full staff for the store already. They are anticipating getting in the store and working, and I'm just, I'm ready. What about your other part? Where is it? Where is so it? Celine yeah. has started um, his own. Uh, Celine has started Belargo Productions. Mm-hmm. So if people are not familiar. He did Fatally Flawless, the movie, about a year and a half ago. Okay. He also dropped Fatally Flawless, the book, which, not just because he's my partner, I'm, I'm one of those hood novel people. Yeah. Like, I read that book, honestly, from front to back, it was 400-something pages. I read that book in two days. I could not put it down. Ooh. Fatally Flawless, mm-hmm. to me, was the book was, if people read books like that, was like a cold as winter ever mm. um a true to the game mm. like it was one of those books he is an amazing 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 writer mm-hmm. i felt like both of us went through a time and, and, and space where after you do something in so long and you created sometimes you do have yeah. you fall out of love with yeah, it yeah. he fell out of love with the fashion Celine mm-hmm. is super creative so he needs to get that creativity yeah, out yeah. in different ways and he failed that in you know writing and production and for me, fashion is just always been my thing. I just felt out of love with aspects of it, and I just needed a break. Mm-hmm. But break's over. Yeah. I'm back. And you back. Now, I see you posted up with Jamila T. Davis. That's my sis. And I was like, yo, that's the chick from Pink or oh, the Pink Collar Crown. She did her time. I seen like, her story. I think Greg posted up too. And I'm yeah. like, yo, to see y'all two together is major. What's going on with that? So I met Jamila actually um, here. I met her at Tasty's through Barb. She came to Tasty's? Yeah, she was at Tasty's. Barb actually knew Jamila first. Uh um, And she was at Tasty's. Um, Barb was like, somebody want to be, I want to introduce you to somebody. She introduced us. Mm -hmm. Jamila was already familiar with, like, she had heard about the brand. She knew a little bit. We clicked immediately. And from there, it just been like, prior to meeting Jamila, I was a big person of the, the, like, I'm very, very protective of my space and who I let yeah. in, yeah. like my inner space and who I call a friend. Yeah. Like I know a lot of people, I got a lot of associates, I got some very few friends. I was close off to inviting new people in my space. Yeah. She made me turn it around. Yeah. The people from, not just from meeting her, from the people that I have met through her, I have some of the closest relationships that I have had in my life yes, after meeting her. But uh, with her, I started doing, um, she was doing actually like a women's tour about like women's empowerment, women mm-hmm. entrepreneur. So she took me on a road to a couple spots to speak. Um, from there, Jamila is now has this amazing organization, mm-hmm. nonprofit organization with Yandy. They are going into the school system to bring entrepreneurship electives into the school. Um, they're in Newark School District, Harlem, Brooklyn, Queens. So from there, all last year, I spent, I became a. Yeah, teacher instructor yeah, yeah, yeah. so okay. i was doing um a course called flip 101 where mm-hmm. i show children 
how to become an entrepreneur, but I, I give them the theory of entrepreneurship and they apply it yeah. practically through starting a clothing brand. I think that's like a, uh, uh, your calling it too, because I know out here you used to do like workshops and stuff. Yes. I was, I was I supposed to go to Harvard University. Yes. And I'm going to start that again as soon as I can yeah. get a, a moment to think yeah. straight. And your prices are reasonable too to, to I, come in there. Yeah. But I, yo, you ain't slick though, because you got Greg and you got your mother. Two business moms. You mean, if you watch that show with, you know, how she was doing a thing with the real estate, because that was your yeah. thing too, then I'm like, you want some shit. Yeah. She wants some shit. I got it's, the right people on real. I definitely the new best friend, <laughs> y'all. And then shout out, now, I can't stop at Jamila. Jamila did introduce me to the legendary Misa Hilton. Mm. Um, Misa. Wait, Puff? Puff? Puff. Puff. Yes, ju uh, that's Justin's mom. Ooh. Everybody knows uh -huh. Misa from the, the legendary tub scene on, yeah. um, was it? I forgot what video there was. Big Pop um, uh, when he was in the yeah, hot tub. Yeah, yeah. And Juicy with her with her blind braids. I love Misa. <laughs> but Miller introduced me to Misa. Um, from there, that I had the opportunity. Misa brought me on board mm -hmm. as her communications coordinator for her Misa Hilton Fashion Academy. And I'm also a streetwear instructor mm -hmm. starting this fall. I'm teaching a streetwear course and a business course mm -hmm. under her academy. Mm -hmm. So. New York was showing me a lot of love. Shout out to the people be like, why she in NY? Yeah. We love you up there. New yeah, York me a lot of that's, love. that's your second home. What's some advice for, uh, for just some, some, some business, like like some business advice for people that's trying to come in and, and start? And I, I Now, I know you do these classes, but if you could just give them like a little bit of like advice or just the, things that you, that you learn, just being a woman okay. in the game and, you know, just trying to start up their business, even down to... The finances down to you know the investor, just your whole like journey with well, one thing or a few things that you learn. Like me, I know now, you know sometimes you gotta watch what you post. Yes, definitely. It's uh -huh. You are a brand. Mm -hmm. We are. We not. I tell. That's one of my branding is my specialty. Yeah. Um, and I think I became a branding specialist mm -hmm. by accident. Like again, I started before social media, so mm -hmm. back then. What people call branding now, I didn't even realize I was branding. Yeah. But uh, we in an era where uh, back then people didn't care who was, they didn't need to feel like they needed to know yeah. who was behind the brand. I had stories of people who was like, well, who owned it? I want to meet the owners. Mm -hmm. She black. Like, why? Why does it make a difference? But it does. Yeah. You, it, it's no separating you from your brand. Mm -hmm. So not only do you have to be conscious of what you do post for your brand, you have mm -hmm. to be conscious of what you post yourself. Your narrative sometimes can become bigger than the brand's mm -hmm. narrative. Um, that's one. My biggest piece of advice I always tell entre entrepreneurs because, again, I feel like social media sometimes glorifies entrepreneurship and just shows people the easy the part, part of it, yeah. the good part. They mm -hmm. make this shit look like you just wake up and mm -hmm. you're a millionaire the next day. That's that's not reality. I mean, you call it it can happen, but yeah, it's not I was reality. Say, let's call it. Let's call it. Exactly. <laughs> But nine times out of ten, it's some hard work that goes behind. Yeah. It. You're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days. Mm -hmm. um, I tell entrepreneurs if your reason of wanting to start a business is money, I'm not going to stop you right there. Yeah. You need to love what you do. Mm -hmm. Loving Belargo is what kept me in the game for mm -hmm. 16 years because mm -hmm. if I didn't love this, I would have been stopped this shit yeah. years ago. It has been times where I'm like, do I really still want to do this? But because this is really truly my, like, Belargo is my baby. I can never give up on this. Mm -hmm. You got to have that kind of love for your business, I would say, to stick, to really be able to, to build the skin to really be built for business. Longevity in a business. I'm not talking about Longevity. having five years and, and four years and you hot, like. Living into that urban brands are only on the shelf for, like, yeah, that no, yeah, mm -hmm. like they told me, urban, uh, urban brands got shelf mm -hmm. lives. No. Like, if this is what you want to do, do you got to love it. Yeah. Um, and then, last but not least, is really take time to understand, study your craft. Mm -hmm. I still have mentors. Even after 16 years, although people might come to me for a mentor, I still have mentors. I still, you know, I, I, I read books. I'm still studying other designers. Like, I love all the designers that's doing their things here, but when people ask me, like, designers that I'm influenced by, I love, I am... Um, Deeply rooted into the streetwear. So when you ask me other designers, I'm looking at. I'm, I'm watching Supreme. I'm watching Palace. I'm watching Hair Ryan Preston. I'm watching the Cold Wall. I'm watching Off White. Um, Tyre Moss. Like I'm studying brands on the level that I want to be at. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the biggest thing of coming back was people felt like, or I get people to ask me, well, you know, 
how you feel like Belargo don't have the, have the spot that it has. I don't feel no way because Belargo don't have the spot that I ever, Belargo still is not at the spot that I ever intended it to be at. Mm -hmm. Like where I see myself or what I see for the brand, I want to be Virgil. That like Virgil is, anybody know me, I love Virgil. I want to be off white or so better. Mm -hmm. I'm Belargo still where, at the height of where it was, it's still not the height of what, what I had, a vision. So it, it only makes me want to work harder to get where I really like honestly see where the brand is and two I can pop up at fashion at Paris Fashion Week for a menswear show I, I'm not done what I need to do I think to, um, in my own opinion and, and what's actual facts too is I love the fact that you're humble and you don't read your own press so you don't feel like the lawyer was this I ain't got a collab with you I ain't talking no I ain't doing no interview oh, yeah. like you know you, you you never gave me that and I, and I think sometimes people have to realize that in order to get your blessings, you have to be, you have to be humble. I mean, I, 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 I could never feel like, no matter how big the brand gets, yeah. you can't feel like you're above anybody else. We all started from, I started from a place that yeah. wasn't always this. Um, and definitely, I'm never going to be yeah. shady or, or closed off to anybody yeah. from my city. Like, for me, I'm big on Philly, too. It's Philly yeah. versus everybody. Yeah. So, if it's any other way I can help another brand or we could collab or somebody is trying to get their podcast yeah. out or you want to, like, would it take me what hour of my day if I got it? Would it take this damn time? I love time? that you said that in, in any game, when I asked you, I said, how do you feel about other brands and things they have going on? You said, in any form of, uh, you know, you know what we talk about, in right. any, any, any form of any kind of business. Any business is always going to. Somebody that's going to create it, and then there's somebody that's going to push the envelope yeah. and take it a step further. Uh -huh. you look at, if you look at hip hop, you look at anything. Yeah. There is, you You had, I mean, we had Run DMC, but then you got as people, then you had a Jay Z. Yeah. Like, who would ever thought Jay Z was going to be Jay Z? Yeah. Then you, you had a Jay Z, but then here comes Drake through the door. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be that next person. You not. Jay Z did a did an article, um, I mean an interview, and in this interview I forgot who he's talking to. He says he's not trying to be that white hot space, the the space that's hot for now. Mm -hmm. He he's seen in Picasso what people couldn't see that Picasso mm -hmm. was gonna be here four hundred years from now. That's where I want the Largo. I don't care if I'm relevant today or I'm the hottest brand out. Like mm -hmm. my goal for me is not to be the hottest brand in Philly. Yeah. Who? No disrespect to Philly, and I don't want to come off cocky, but who cares about yeah. it? I want to be an established brand that's around mm -hmm. for existence for eternity. That is my goal, and I'm not stopping till I get there. I know that's right. I tell these Philly artists all the time. I said I don't understand why you have these arrogant attitudes, and then when you need the help or trying to get the a million views, now all of a sudden you can't have an arrogant attitude. Because let me tell you one thing. This is the other thing I have for entrepreneurs. You don't know if you made for this. I tell one mm -hmm. entrepreneur, you don't really know if you cut for this mm -hmm. until you had it and lost it. Mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. Everything is good when you win it. When you win but it. But unless you know what that loss was like, and I done took some losses, yeah, and yeah. I know how to recover from losses. Yeah. Unless you know how to bounce back from that, we can, we can't even have it the same kind of conversation. You got to know how to have it, lose it, and get it back again. Yo, the third That's is, when you know you meant, meant for this. The third thing you said, you said, what I look like closing the doors for the other people that's coming through. Exactly. That's what we supposed to do. That's what I feel like is wrong <laughs> with, with a lot of the black mentality, like the African-American mentality. Mm -hmm. the, 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 I'm supposed to open the door so I can bring, I'm trying yeah. to bring the whole hood through with me. That's mm -hmm. the same thing if you look at with Greg. He always says this with his real estate. People... Philly in, in particular, and I don't know if it's other cities, because I'm from here. Mm -hmm. Philly in particular like to pin people against each other. Like, yeah. oh, well, what you think she doing, what you doing? That's great. I was hoping that when I started doing what I was going to do, I would inspire more people to do yeah. what I was going to do. Same thing to ask him. Like, oh, you started the real estate GUC so-and-so. That's what he did. That's what he started the game for. So he can bring other people behind him that mm -hmm. wants to get in the real estate. Does it, it can't stop at him. Does it bother you? It can't you stop at me. When you don't, um, when they're not giving you the same attitude, like, well, it, 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 like, how you're saying that and you're, you're congratulating others on what they're doing, do you feel like, damn, I'm not getting that back? No, because I don't, again, I don't need nobody to validate me. Mm -hmm. I know what it is that I put into this game. Mm -hmm. I know what it is that I've done for the city. Mm -hmm. I know what it is that my brand, the, the things that my brand has accomplished. There's nobody that can validate what I do mm -hmm. or make me feel better or less about about my brand. I validate my, I'm my own validation. Yeah. So I really honestly, again, not to come off super cocky, but I really just don't care. 
I'm not. I don't, I don't. I'm not here waiting on the praise of somebody to make me feel yeah. like I, I, I'm accomplished. Mm -hmm. I gotta wake up and, and love what I do and feel satisfied and fulfilled with me to feel of the feel accomplished, regardless of what anybody else does. Mm -hmm. And I mean that's the game again. I'm 16 years, so I've been past different generations. This new generation don't know the history of Belarga. Yeah. They don't know Belarga. Right now, they know the brands that's out, that's popping in the city. Milano, Novello, they know the other brands. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Because yeah. that's not that, that's not my end all be all for mm -hmm. me. Any, any, I don't like these words for cracks. I, I hate that. Any changes or, you know, just anything you would have done differently in that time back then, even when you was getting and making that money, going out the truck of your car. Going I think to, I should have uh, pressed go faster of mm, trying to expand the brand outside of Philadelphia mm, faster than I than I did. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a regret because I feel like everything I went through prepared me for the moment that I'm at right now. Right, right. Um, and again, like I said, the, the losses prepared me to understand of how to be able to bounce back and deal with losses and recover. Um, but I mean, that would be kind of one thing because I felt like I had opportunities for the brand to really yeah. But I was not focused enough and I was stuck in other places. What's not focused? Um, uh, yeah, being young, don't talk about. Uh, not focused a lot. Of being young, I, it became a time like a, a funny thing if any of my friends is watching. I, I have a few friends, and probably my relationship I was in at the time would tell me things like, I love Tiffany, but I hate Miss Belargo. And I used to be like, What the hell did that mean? It's the same person. But I could not see that Miss Belargo had become. Like a, a alter ego, like yeah. another person. Miss Belargo at in like the height of Belargo was very much stuck in her ways. Mm -hmm. You couldn't tell me nothing. I was not open to learning anything from mm -hmm. anybody. I felt like I knew it all. The money was coming so fast that I felt like it would. That's the one thing. Don't ever assume that money is always going to be there because it comes. So it was coming so fast and it was so much money at my disposal that I didn't like that save for a rainy day that they tell you to. I didn't think no rain was coming. And baby, when that rain hit, we, I was not prepared for it. Um, and the rain came, and I wasn't prepared for it. So um, that's what I mean about being focused. I wasn't up on top of my finances. I wasn't on top of like how to grow the brand. Mm -hmm. That's why I feel like the brand became stagnated because we got comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's what I would learn. I would never be a point in time where I'm gonna ever take my foot off, off the gas yeah, yeah. and get comfortable yeah, but the, well, ever yeah. again. I'm thinking with the kids somewhere in the, in the mix. Yeah. I hope it's some kids. I mean, God knows better than me. I, I'm at a, I'm at a, prior to, to uh, uh, now, I don't feel like I was at a space. I was moving around too much. Yeah. So I, I would want to be very much a hands-on mom mm -hmm. if I if I have children. I didn't think I was in the right mm -hmm. mind frame to, to be anyone's mother. Oh, right now, though, I feel like my life is, is more calm. I can sit back and relax. Again, this time going in, I have a great team around me, so my business don't call for a hundred percent me. Like yeah. I can, I can devote some time and, and percentage to other things. Okay, but well, listen, I appreciate talking to you. Um, I want to do something where we grab the live and they ask you a couple questions. Yeah. You want to do it? Yeah, well, let's do it. Here we go, baby. All right, Ooh, we got we got some folks on here. Um, some of you said you. You were young and many misled when we were young to have inspired a lot of people. Ah, let's see. Ah, let's see. Oh, people say they always been a nice person since the first day you met. Oh, thank you. Um, let's see. I'm so, I'm so inspired. I'm starting. I guess you you start your classes. Sun, uh, somebody said it's summertime. Uh, yeah, I was do. I was planning yeah. to start classes in June. Mm -hmm. We a little behind schedule. I gotta get the store out the way because one thing with, with with coaching, I need to be able to fully focus. Mm -hmm. I don't want to half face give somebody my attention when when I'm trying to help you with your business. Yeah, so I want you to have a hundred percent me. Some so. somebody said, have you ever thought about doing anything different as far as retail? Um, mm, that's a good question. Mm. Only thing I would say different, like we say in the interview, my, my last South Street store, I wouldn't have done that at all. If okay. I could go back. I don't think that was a smart, that was not a smart move for the brand. Mm -hmm. Money, uh, financially, that wasn't a smart move for the brand. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would not have done that store. How do you feel about paving the way for, 
Uh, it's just like how you feel about paving the way for the new. Uh, here, go. how you feel about paving the way to for the new designers? I'm humbled mm -hmm. that I even get the title of paving the way. <laughs> I'm still having a. a, a it's it still taking time for me to adjust with. Uh, that's the title that I, I, I have. I'm given, but. I mean, I, I'm glad and honored that I was able to do something mm -hmm. that inspired other people and gave a lane for other people to do. So what's that? Meanwhile, I still want the pink and gray varsity jacket. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh wow. <laughs> How is business businesses going? No, they want they pink. Uh, oh, they want gray. Gray. <laughs> so my gosh, I, I just strayed away from women's wear. Gray uh -huh. curses me out daily. We gotta do women's clothing. I really don't want to do women's clothing. It's, it's weird because I'm a woman, and people be like, "Well, how you don't want to do clothing for you?" But I love, I love men's wear. Yeah, I do. I love men's wear. Fun fact: I was a tomboy, so I used to wear boys' clothing. So that might be like my fascination with, with men's wear. I do. I love men's wear. Yeah, everybody show you so much love. Um, I want to know is if she's still rebranding. What's next for you, Brent? Y'all gotta watch the interview, man. I, I, we can't give you everything. We into one There's more. There's a lot of big things that are coming next for the brand. Um, definitely, the Largo has definitely rebranded. You're not gonna really get this feel the the feel of what new Largo looks like until fall drops. I'll okay. say that. Yeah. So you heard what she said. Look, if y'all wanna watch the interview, I'm be loading it up really, 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 really soon. Somebody said, "Tiff, I love you." Oh, I love you too. I'm blind. <laughs> Leah, hi boo, I love you too. That's my sis. So yeah, well, yeah. So I'm let y'all know real soon. We are gonna put it up. Um, Belargo probably put the uh, link somewhere or or the promo up. And, I sure will. Yeah, I mean. So let's do it, guys.